Wow. I am in absolute love with this view. For a final video of this one day adventure through Old San Juan, we're ending with the view of the entire historic center of this beautiful UNESCO World Heritage Site in the castle of San Cristobal, which is the last portion of the fort built from 1634 all the way to 1790 when it was completed. It's a massive fort, 24 acres large, and we're gonna get to how much these so absolutely gorgeous so look at the clouds ahead bringing rain to all the nearby pueblos the municipalities as here we are very sunny which is awesome seeing that quite difference so this is to not be confused with el morro which is right down there look at that that's El Morro. That's where we started today. It was very our very first Facebook Live. And I ventured through Old San Juan with all of you. Ate food right down there at Punta Vista rooftop restaurant. And now we have ended up at San Cristobal Fort. Castillo San Cristobal, completed in 1790, making up the largest Spanish fort in history, in history of the Americas, to be specific. Hello, Alex Young, welcome. Hello, Doris, nice to see you here. Welcome to this live broadcast. Hello, uh, Jackie, I'm out doing shores. You'll watch for a few minutes. I came here, came here, at the nick of time in order to enjoy this. The cruise ship is about to leave. That's so cool. We came here at the perfect time. It's about to close at 6 p.m. The cruise ships are about to leave. The sun is going to set soon, about two hours. A little bit less than a minute. A little bit less than two hours. And we're just seeing amazing views as the clouds billow up. And maybe we'll account for rain coming to New York City. So let's enjoy the views. Let's talk a little bit about La Perla, which is uh, the little area right by Old San Juan that's kind of disconnected from the city, has many legends associated with it. And let's learn a little bit about haunted history of La Garita del Diablo, which is the Devil's Watchtower. So let me not ring this doorbell, this uh, bell, I mean, just in case, because it could um, lead to people thinking that something is going on. Hello, Valentino. Hello, Selena. Welcome. Hello, Nikita. Hello, Doris. Whew. This, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the island of enchantment. One of the most beautiful cities in the world that I've visited so far. Well, I'm biased because I am Puerto Rican, but you can judge for yourself and see the videos I did all throughout today. Absolutely gorgeous views. And being up here, I did not realize, because I've been here a few times when I was much younger, I did not realize how far up we are. Um, the fort was built extremely tall in respect to the rest of the city. Ring the bell, it's okay, says Cynthia. How many miles do you think I walked today? Probably around 10, maybe a little bit more than that. I walked a lot of miles today. I don't track my miles, but I walked a lot of them. How do I feel? I feel like I had a great, incredible workout, and soon I'm going to rest on a good hammock somewhere. I'll find a hammock. It'll be out there somewhere. It's beckoning me to come over and sit and it's beautiful roped threads. Let's check this out over here. Did I buy a beer? No, I bought myself a piña colada, not a beer. Um, hello Lourdes from 
Bella Isla de Encanto. Ooh, check this out. So I mentioned earlier that there is the islet of San Juan. And the old San Juan is this side over here. The fort that we're standing Castillo San Cristobal was the last portion built in 1790 however the fort encompassed all the entire islet around however this side this was the newer side and it was uh, nearly empty uh, had a few shacks there was about uh, 500 people living on this end uh, most of them were Africans who um, were settling outside of the borders of the old town. Uh, but on this side, it was a burgeoning city and uh, around 5,000 people. However, that changed in the 1890s when they started dismantling these stones. Not this one of the actual fort, but the wall that surrounded it. And it is great construction. Look at this. Heavy, heavy, heavy. We're touching 300 years of history. 1790 was when most of this was completed. So yes, San Cristobal in area is, I think, up to three times larger than El Morro. Um, this is about 24, 25, 24 to 28 acres large. So it's very, very big. Uh, I can't explore it all today. Um, plus, there's sections that are still closed off that there are kind of uh, administrative. But here we're seeing a bird's eye view, basically. And it is magical. And I just want to iterate again. Look at these clouds. Uh, there's this awesome phenomenon where there's the mountain ranges really covering uh, this entire area of San Juan. So San Juan has like double, Puerto Rico has like double protection. We have this huge fort protecting the, har the main harbor of Puerto Rico, uh, which is the, the San Juan Harbor, and then you have the Cataño Harbor across the water. But you also have these mountains prote uh, protecting the inside of the island uh, where a lot of crops were traditionally grown. Mágico y misterio. Exacto. There's a viewfinder. Let's take a look inside. beautiful so these are some stairways they lead down so there's a lot of ways to go down <laughs> after you get noise um, there's a lot of ways to go down there's ramp there's ramps and there are stairways uh, because you have to think about it if there's an attack as there were with two British attacks and one major Dutch attack you want to be able to mobilize very quickly through this the horns that you heard before is this huge ship. This is a cruise ship. I think this is Carnival, if I'm correct. Uh, it looks like the Carnival colors. And the horn is telling all the ship, cruise ship goers to come back so they can continue on their journey through the rest of the Caribbean. Or am I going to the trolley? I wonder if it's running today. You know, I don't think the trolley is running. Uh, I did not see it pop up all day today. I was here since um, since, 9 a, since 8 a.m. Uh, and I did not see the trolley at all. It's a shame. I think they might have uh, shut it down because of the protests. But let's take a closer look at the rooftops. Ah, okay, I knew you knew your uh, your ships. From parts of the mountain, you can see San Juan Bay. Yes, you can. San Crisoba is actually larger. Yes, it is. Linda, you love this. Amazing. Fascinating place. Do you buy a beer? No, I did not buy a beer. I bought myself a good piña colada. However, the beer here in Puerto Rico is very good. I love Old Harbor Brewery. Great microbrewery. Selling a beer that is named after my ancestor, Cofresi. I hope to one day find uh, the actual uh, family tree. Family members have it somewhere archived. All right, 
So let's keep walking around and let's try to find before they close down the place at 6 p.m. Let's find La Garita de Diablo. Sounds like a great telenovela. Por qué, Maria? <laughs> but Garita de Diablo stands for the Devil's Watchtower. We'll find it. Let's go. Hugo! Hugo Viera, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, let know all your followers what's happening in Puerto Rico. I think many people, hey, how's it going? Uh, I think a lot of people already know. I, again, I don't cover politics, uh, so it's not, it's not in my content to make uh, anything about all current day affairs. I cover history and all of its beauties and architecture and food and many other wonderful things. So here is where they station the cannons and um, I'm assuming here most likely they had a swivel so it can move the cannon wherever the boat was, the ship was. So if the Dutch were coming from this way, boom, they can hit it from this way. If they're coming from that way, they can swivel it. It would take a, probably a few men, I'm not entirely sure how many, uh, three, five men to move it. Boom, they can hit it the other way. But look at this water. Wow. Wow. Great Sunday trip. You feel like you're here with me. Amazing. I'm so glad uh, you're getting that experience. Breathtaking. Okay, I think I see it. Down there is La Garita de Diablo. Let's try to see if we can get a better view. I'm not entirely sure how we're, we're going to be able to do that. Look at these breathtaking views. If uh, eh, today was kind of a new thing for me, this is the first time I kind of done like five Facebook lives. I did four, four Facebook lives in total. Uh, four too long one short and this one i don't know how long it'll go but if you enjoy like this kind of bombardment of coverage of just one smaller city uh for just one day finding out everything we can uh let me know let me know maybe i'll do that with other smaller cities uh, around the world uh, maybe some a few uh close to new york like boston uh, but let me know if you like this type of coverage just one day uh for a weekend going for all the places we can get in one day for a smaller city I wish I was there despite the troubles indeed. Uh, Evelyn, that's right, get him, boom. <laughs> I've been camping, we'll need to reach or rewatch my replays. Hell yeah, Bre uh, Brenda, they'll be up and HD versions will be posted later this week. Cofresi, un pirata, yes. Cofresi is my ancestor. Should, should we stay? Do you guys want to stay? Sure sure you want to leave? I mean, it sounds optional. Yeah. I did bring like a pillow with me. You know? yeah. right. Let's see the, the bed lock. So over here. Over here is La Perla. La Perla was a slum. And don't mean to use the word too negatively, just a, a, a lower uh, income neighborhood uh, that was outside of the city walls. Now, the city walls encompass much of the isolate of San Juan. And right before they started dismantling the wall, um, many lower income families moved in that outer part, that little section outside, and ended up being called La Perla. I'm not entirely sure what it means, but uh, La Bella has had a very strong reputation uh, for being very crime ridden and very uh, centered in the drug trade. Uh, that is something that changes uh, slowly, and of course, there are many awesome people down there. Uh, so there's a bunch of street art, uh, it's very close to the beach, and surprisingly, it hasn't been taken over by condominiums or a major resort or hotel. Uh, it's a very kind of anomaly of, of, of what 
Puerto Rico, in this area of San Juan. And they may lock you in. Yes, <laughs> they may lock you in. I assume they do a sweep, but they may lock you in. Okay, let's try to find La Garita de Diablo, which uh, we barely can see it. I wonder if there is like a good view of it. Maybe you have to go down to La Perla to get the good view. I see people down there, so maybe uh, that is the public area we can go and see La Garita del Diablo. But I'll just tell you about La Garita del Diablo here. Let's try, let's try to give you a good view. There it is. Okay. There it is. You see that small sentry tower very close to the water? Hmm, that's very odd. Why is it so close to the water? image in mind it's very close to the water maybe I'll walk down there and give you a better view but why why is it so close to the water well there's a few theories one is maybe it's just a normal watchtower and they decide to build it close to the water just in case they want to see if anyone's coming uh, I don't know, swimming ashore maybe some Dutch decide to come via canoe or boat <laughs> maybe um, and then one day, uh, a few of the Spanish soldiers were uh, being called up to do their rounds of, uh, you know, kind of test drills or whatever that they do in order to kind of um, see if everything's running up to speed. And one man, one man was, was missing. And he went to La Garita del Diablo. Uh, no one knows why, but he went over there. And his friend... Uh, trying to get him to come to um, come into attention for the for the drill that they had to do, otherwise he would get reprimanded. He went over there to the Garita de Diablo and saw nothing. There was no man there. There was no the the window is so small you can't throw yourself off of it or jump off. Simply he disappeared. Ever since then, people have been hearing moans and screams. Maybe it is from that missing soldier. They never found him. He was never found in the fort. He was never found, escaped. No one knows what happened to him. He just vanished in this watchtower right by the rough seas of the Atlantic. However, there's another theory. The theory that these screams and moans doesn't come simply from just the vanished soldier. But these screams and moans come from prisoners who were held captive in La Garita del Diablo, the Devil's Watchtower. Now why were prisoners kept there? Well maybe they were soldiers who kind of, you know, committed a crime got rowdy and they would be put into the devil's watchtower and according to legend no soldiers were left starving starving to die in the devil's watchtower to this day people still hear their screams and moan just screaming out into the night underneath the Puerto Rican moon that is the legend of the Garita the Diablo the Devil's Watchtower. You may not want to go there. Not through this door. Oh no. But we are. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> so San Cristobal is pretty big. There's a lot to explore here, of course. I uh, highly recommend you taking your time here. Um, on live video, I can't really go to the rooms because the walls are so thick. It's kind of impossible to give you a good look inside on live video at least but highly recommend coming here uh, the ticket for El Morro and San Cristobal are the same ticket so you only pay one admission for both of them he must have been very skinny yep he must have been very skinny all right so I just heard about Italy Italy Jackie says, I just heard about Italy from my friend who spent two weeks there. I 
and Puerto Rico from you. Very educational and delightful day today. Oh, amazing. Glad you learned about Italy and Puerto Rico. Welcome. Uh, and the sky has been so extraordinarily blue this time of year. Just so gorgeous in all your photos and videos. Yeah, I mean, we got lucky having immense rain at the rainforest yesterday. And we got very lucky having sun, beautiful old San Juan. Now let's walk outside. Let me show you San Cristobal from the outside and maybe a little bit closer look of La Bella. So there's a gift shop and beautiful walls. I just got to touch them one more time. Oh yeah, architecture. Actually, let's drink some water. Oh, wow. Whoa. Check this out. Look at this window, it looks so cool. It's like perfectly aligned with the street. That is awesome. Wow, that's so cool. That's great like selfie material. Wow, that's so cool. That's amazing, that's so cool. Great place for a party. I agree. A party at the Garita del Diablo. No, no don't party there. You wouldn't want to. <laughs> so it's also, a, uh, this is a national historic site. It's La Fortaleza, World Heritage Site as well. Obviously not ancient fountain. Well, that fountain dates back to the age of 1397. No, no, just joking. Um, obviously not. <laughs> All right, let's head out. Have a good day. Someone's playing the Cidente, yeah, the Cidente. The... He's, he's a great musician. Um, if you ever want to listen to some great Puerto Rican reggaeton, listen to the band Calle 13. That was the band he was originally in before he went solo. Amazing, amazing reggaeton. Uh, I think he really kick-started uh, reggaeton as a higher musical form. Also, another recommendation I was going to tell you... Um, we visited Piraguas in the earlier live video. Go listen to the In the Heights cast album, which is the Broadway musical uh, made by Lynn manuel Miranda, who made Hamilton. And he made an amazing song in the Heights called Piraguas. And it's about the Piraguero in Washington Heights, New York City. And it's a beautiful song. It goes something like this. Piragua, Piragua. Ba -da 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 -da. So listen to it. And yeah, the Cidente nowadays could be very intense. Um, Calle 13, his uh, previous band, was uh, a lot more comical. I, I like his older music. It's a little bit more lighthearted. Otherwise, you know, if you listen to his music now, you probably get bummed out. <laughs> he's, he's very strong in his beliefs. And here is... Uh, Here's a watchtower, and luckily, it is not the Garita de Diablo. And Lynn will be the Piragua man. Whoa, whoa! No me diga, Carol. <laughs> That's a reference to another uh, In the Heights song, where uh, a few of the women are like, No me diga, and No me diga is kind of... No me diga is kind of, it smells like piss in there. No me diga is kind of like, shut up, don't tell me. Like, really? Uh, oh my God, it's, it's kind of like when you say gossip. Uh, so I'm surprised that Lin Manuel Moreno is gonna be the Piragua man. That's fucking, that, that, I'm oh, sorry, that's amazing. I'm so happy to hear that. Happy to hear that.
that really smelled horrible. Oh, someone took a very long, long, long piss in that, in that, uh, in that watchtower. Yeah, you don't say. That's that's the better uh, translation. Thank you. You're kidding me is another another yeah, good translation. You know, like uh, any type of phrase, sometimes it means various things. Depends on how you say it, when you say it. Let's see if we can get a better view. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now we got good views. Uh, La Garita de Diablo. Una nueva telenovela en Univision. Lunes a la 8 p.m. The Devil's Watchtower, a new series on the History Channel. Saturdays at 8 p.m. Stay tuned. It's a new show I'm developing. Um, it's going to be on Netflix. It's going to be about that little watchtower and all of its misadventures. Puerto Rico! People are singing over there. <laughs> They're enjoying it. Puerto Rico is a very lively uh, area when it comes to music. Everyone's always playing music. Right, things are empty in here pretty quickly. No tourists are here. I'm wondering. Maybe because they want to avoid. Yeah, someone, someone's playing, uh, someone's having like a party in one of these. Uh, taking a photo of me talking to a camera by myself. I just wave at him. <laughs> well, that is, it's such a weird watchtower. And the windows are actually smaller than the normal windows that you see here. They look like from this distance. The PR viejas, viejas guy that stood guard on my stoop 24-7 at 24th Street in Chelsea were called Bonchincheras. Ooh, interesting, interesting. I never heard of those guys. And that is San Cristobal from outside looks massive and huge now the grass is usually very green uh, but it has been very dry in Puerto Rico the past few weeks I think past month or two and hence uh, a lot of things have been drying up very quickly though as you saw there was a bunch of clouds all around the island so rain has finally been coming oh bonchicheras are the, the, the old ladies who gossip yes I think I have heard that term before. I personally haven't used that term, so that's why they immediately come to mind. But I do think uh, Puerto Ricans do use that term. So I'm actually pretty shocked by this, but there used to be like some very, very run down buildings here uh, when I was much younger. Look at this car. So cool. That is awesome. Old Volkswagen. Hola. <laughs> so cool. Um, another big difference in, um, in Puerto Rican culture is generally you can just wave to people and they wave back, or they wave at you, just randomly, strangers. Uh, you might know, not know them at all. You might be in the car, you might be walking outside, they'll just wave, hello. Uh, unlike, you don't really see that in the US. You don't see a full wave. Sometimes in the US you see like a nod, but not full wave. Depends, uh, I'm talking about mostly about New York, maybe. maybe there's other places that do it differently. Uh, but yeah, these are very new apartments for this area of San Juan. 
uh, which is rarity. You don't see things like this modern over here. But I appreciate that they somewhat kept the color scheme. scheme. Uh, Jackie says, title for your TV show, Ariel el Aventurero. A new show on Univision. He's going to go to new wonderful places. Great TV show name. Thank you so much, Jackie, for the recommendation. People are now leaving, I think, the protests, and that's why it is packed to the rim with people passing through. It wasn't this packed before. And uh, let's check out the bigger buildings over here, the Capitol. <laughs> this is way more cars than I've ever expected before. I have no idea what's happening. Maybe they just saw, let people finally come through. And it is rare for old towns in general in the world to really allow that this much traffic, especially when you go to Europe. You don't really see this much traffic in Europe. Let's see if we can cross the street. Yeah, tomorrow there will be a march uh, in the major highway, Frederico, uh, that connects a lot of the metropolitan center here. Um, so yeah, tomorrow might be difficult. Though stay tuned, I might be able to go live at 2 p.m. at the Bacardi factory uh, to learn about how they make rum and cocktails. And stay tuned, yeah, I might be able to do that. We're crossing fingers, not 100% sure yet. But let me show you a little bit more of Old San Juan. I, I'm just so in love with this. Scenery here. I just gotta show you more. Oh, let me show you. Let me show you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I love that you do these tours because uh, many of us do not have a chance to do so. Uh, yeah, you're right, uh, Denise. Don, Donna. I mean, um, it pains me to know that some some people out there. Are, uh, like some of you are unable to uh, walk around, but I'm glad I, I'm able to be your kind of virtual guide through these places, walking around vicariously. I know I would appreciate the same. Hi again, Irene. I'm so happy you were able to tune in live. So let's um Does anyone have anything they would like to see? Pretty much covered everything, but if you want to see one more thing, let me know. Maybe let's check out this food court over here. This is more of a wandering, so uh, I'm just gonna go with the flow here and just walk around. <laughs> Amazing architecture, yeah. I think I, the ship is about to go. Final call. Ship is gone. If a tourist got too drunk on pina coladas and stayed, uh, they are screwed. <laughs> Beers for two dollars. Yep, you read that right. Beers for two dollars in North America. Uh, that's a rarity. <laughs> Look at these views. Wow. Wow. You do the merengue. Indeed I do. I do the merengue. Merengue, originally music from from Dominican Republic. However, Puerto Ricans adopted it in the 1990s and musicians like Elvis Crespo, who is Puerto Rican, popularized it around the world, especially with songs like Suavemente. Suavemente, besame. And look at this. 
Oh, Jackie, that's what you want to see. You want me to see to dance the mitting. All right, let's find some mitting. Well, we're not in DR, we're in PR, but we'll try. Indeed, a lot of these buildings are very, very old. And there are markings here. This one says, En esta casa nació José Julián Acosta y Calvo en febrero 1825. Historiador, periodo, educador. So it's a, it's a patriot, uh, educator, and historian. His name was... Uh, Jose Julian Acosta and he lived right here so there are plaques here famous Puerto Ricans who lived here you might recognize a few names um, there might be a few I assume there might be two two or three like very major Puerto Rican celebrities that have lived here at some point yes I'm taking a souvenir I'm taking a pilon with me pilon showed it to you briefly but it's uh, the thing to make mofongo with. Can, I can make mofongo with just like a bowl and and um, I'm gonna use a, a mallet, but uh, uh, it's nice to have the original authentic pilon, uh, which is a Taino uh, tool to make some mofongo. They used it originally, because they didn't have plantains, they used it originally for um, yuca, and in order to make mashed yuca. Jackie, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Have a great day. Might see all of you tomorrow uh, outside of someone for two or three broadcast for not two or three for me one or two broadcasts. And these are the restaurants, which I already saw many of them. Let's go up the street. I'll show you a little bit more of the old city. It's so beautiful to just not show it to all of you. Pilon is not made out of stone. You can probably find a stone pilon, but it's uh, tr traditionally made out of wood. Um, so, yeah, most pilons you will buy in any souvenir store would be made out of wood. Just make sure it's not covered in wax, because that might affect the flavor of the food. Unless if you intend to just using it as decoration. Oh, so remember in Bushwick... When I mentioned about the flower vendor selling white lilies and we saw that beautiful mural, here's a painting of another mural of a man, a, floor, a flower seller selling white lilies. Oh, that's amazing. Huh. That's so cool. Now, someone doesn't have that many alleyways, but has a few of them, which look pretty awesome. Oh, Becky, you're saying so clean. Which New York City has, is so clean. Yeah, um, someone has improved significantly and has become very clean since then. Here's another alleyway. Now, someone has changed significantly similar to New York City. Um, before in the 1980s, you really... 1990s you really didn't want to walk here too late at night uh, though it has changed significantly uh, has become much more safer and people tend to it's getting a little bit empty but people still walk around later in the night and there are a few hotels so uh, the the restaurant I went to earlier was inside a hotel and there this is another hotel so I've seen three so far this Casablanca hotel
Cynthia, oh, you're saying that that is uh, based on the real person who actually sells flowers every morning. That's awesome. Oh, I wish I saw him. Oh, this is interesting. This is more kind of like a Moroccan revival? Moroccan style? Or Arabic style? Beautiful nonetheless. That is rare here in Puerto Rico. And this was the entrance to the restaurant I went to earlier, Punto de Vista. So as you can see, most of Old San Juan is very walkable. So you can easily walk from one side to the other. It only takes about 20 minutes. Uh, there is some steep streets, but you can avoid the steep streets if you um, are smart about where you're walking towards. Walk more towards the northern end of the islet. And then uh, you'll avoid these bigger, bigger, uh, steeper streets. So here is the other hotel. Oh, that rooftop. There we go. I found my hammock. There we go. We went to Old San Juan 66. It was awful looking and safe. Sure, it has changed. Kind of like NYC, but NYC, not for the better. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It has changed for the better here in San Juan. There has been um, a big... Um, remodeling and, and, and preserving of the architecture. Amazing. There we go. And this is the final little piece of history I'll give to all of you. This is what my grandfather used to wear. And basically every Puerto Rican who's my age or older, their grandfathers also, also used to wear this. This is a Guayabera shirt. And this was the traditional clothing for um, Puerto Rican men um, two generations ago. Um, anyone who's really well above the age of, say, 80 at this point wore a Guayabera. Maybe a little bit younger, but uh, at least from my experience, I saw mostly men who are older than 80 wearing this. They still sell it. Some people still wear it. Um, some of them still have two pockets in the front, which are a little bit more older style. But yeah, it's a, it's a traditional Puerto Rican uh, shirt. And I never worn one. <laughs> I've been tempted to buy one. You kind of just wear it. I was tempted to buy one and wear it for these broadcasts. If only I could find a floral guayabera. Let me show it to you here. Show it to you here. Has a New Orleans vibe. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some New, some New Orleans vibe to it. Men look han handsome in them. Oh, yeah, Shayla. Indeed they do. Indeed they do. Brenda says, I need to get one. Indeed I do. Everyone wants a uh, Iguayabera. <laughs> just to so just walk by the stores and get free air conditioning. It's amazing. Uh, so yeah, Guayabera. It's, a, it's an interesting style of dress. And then uh, women also wear some more traditional clothing, though that goes a little bit further back. They wore like kind of the bands around their hair, sometimes with like a flower or something above, like a, it's like a band. Uh, and they wear the kind of these flowy, flowy, flowy dresses. There used to be a restaurant here that had the waitresses dressed up that way. Uh, the restaurant's still open, though I don't think the waitresses are no longer dressed that way, unfortunately. Though you might be able to say danzas, which are these dances that have women dressed up that way. 
And yes, I avoided the heat wave. Like right now it's literally cooler than it is in New York City. So here, more of the wonderful buildings. Some of them really did go up tall. So uh, Old San Juan was a proper city back in the late 1800s, early 1900s. James, you have one, you're in your 50s. Maybe I'm under overestimating a little bit uh, on how old uh, were the last Guayabero wearers. So, uh, yeah. My parents didn't own any of them, though none of my um, uncles, but I definitely did ha do have grand uncles who have worn Guayaberas. All right, everyone, if you enjoyed this broadcast, let me know. Edwena, I'm way off about the Guayabira. Let me know how. Maybe people are still wearing them. I don't see it personally. So I'll, I'll speak from my personal experience. Um, yeah, I haven't seen it. Speaking from my personal experience. Uh, and off to Puerto Rico on Tuesday, but in Gran Canaria. Ooh, oh, yes. I'm glad you mentioned that. So Christopher Columbus, named this island Puerto Rico. The original name of the Tainos was Borinquen. The reason he called it Puerto Rico um, is twofold. One, because he was inspired by a, a port in Italy that was called uh, Puerto Rico. And then also there is a Canary Island um, city or, or town called Puerto Rico. And he named it mostly after that, but he was also inspired by the, by the Italian one. And that's how it got its name and wasn't changed by Juan Ponce de Leon. He decided to stick with it. Um, and Cynthia, Ariel, the urbanist, get a Guayabera. And do people live in these buildings? Oh, yeah, someone asked that earlier. Yes, this is still a very residential neighborhood. People are still very well living here, partying here. They still uh, grab drinks here. There's still restaurants here uh, that open late at night. It's still a very vibrant town that's lived in. So people are still living here. Uh, and there's still cars passing through. But as you can tell, Sunday night, it pretty much empties out. San Juan is still kind of a, a, um, a, a cruise ship city. So people are mostly coming here via cruise ship. So that's why and after the cruise ships leave, there's a lot less people. That's slowly changing though. Let's walk through here. And James, I'm so glad you love this broadcast. And LA ha, uh, has been usually, unusually delightful so far. More like late winter, ooh, wonderful. I'm so glad. Looked like someone in the car waved at you. Oh, I didn't see it, but I'm glad. See, I told you, people wave here all the time. It's getting packed with people, a lot of cars moving through. Yes, it is expensive to live in San Juan. However, it's not so expensive to rent an Airbnb. Uh, hotels, probably. El Covento is definitely expensive. Uh, but Airbnb, not so much. Um, I was go only, I didn't manage to stay at Airbnb here in Old San Juan, but uh, my original plans was to stay one that had a beautiful rooftop, 360 views, and it was only about $59 a night. So very in inexpensive for such a central location. Um, mind you, resorts cost $170 to $250 a night minimum on average. Uh, you can go way higher than that for resorts here. All right. So great price, yeah, for a resort. So things are closing down pretty rapidly. 
Thank you everyone so much for watching this broadcast of old San Juan from San Cristobal back into the old town. I hope you enjoyed this four Facebook live broadcast. If you want to see more smaller cities kind of done all in one day, uh, showing you some food, showing you some neighborhoods, some landmarks, um, as opposed to my kind of like a few times a week live videos from bigger cities, let me know if you want to see that in the future. Maybe I'll do Boston, maybe I'll do Washington DC. And tomorrow, stay tuned, maybe at 2 p.m., crossing fingers, that I'm able to do it. Keep being awesome, and always keep on exploring. Have a great day, everyone. Oh, wait, sorry. One coffee recommendation is, right by here, there's a coffee shop called Cafe, oh, it's called Cafe Sombras. Amazing coffee. Uh, I recommended Cafe Don Ruiz earlier, but there's another great coffee shop, Cafe Sombras. Check it out, right by here. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Bye bye.